this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about something a little bit different. A stupid mistake that I made that hopefully you won't make after watching this video. And this video features the Strix Z790 gaming Wi-Fi motherboard from Zeus. Now I want to talk to you about why I'm an idiot and why it's important to pay attention to things. This is a Z790 motherboard, Intel's 13th generation socket motherboard, and it's designed to take obviously 13th gen CPUs. I went about the process last night of unboxing it and readying it to set up and build inside a case that I'll show you later on, to swap out with my main system, which currently has a formula motherboard in it with a 12th gen i9 12900K. 64 gigabytes of RAM, a whole bunch of NVMe drives, an RTX 3090 and more. I was excited to try this out because it's a nice looking motherboard as you can see from various different angles. It's got this like Pac-Man aesthetic on it. Now I should note that Azus sent me this board in order to do this video and to do some testing on it and obviously to include it in various bits of content. So thanks to them. However, I have come a cropper and I've got a big problem, and I'm going to show you what it is in a minute, so stick with me. But as you can see from various different angles, this is a really nice looking board. And that's actually really cool as well, because it comes with four NVMe M2 sockets hidden under these various different plates and heatsink shieldings. There's four sockets for NVMe drives in there. So I was really excited when I found that out, because multiple drives for various different reasons. Fantastic, epic use cases, and really good. Now for this, I already have several different drives. I've got a Kingston KC3000 NVMe drive, multiple crucial drives, WD Black, all sorts. And as you can see, four sticks of Kingston Fury Beast RAM, and as I mentioned already, a new Intel processor. This is the i9, this is the 13th generation i9 13900K, which I was gonna install in here and then test and use, and that's where I've come unstuck because although I can install the CPU, I have a bigger problem, which is gonna render this useless and cause issues. And while doing that, I wanted to talk to you about why this is a problem and why you should watch out because it's really important to do your research before you purchase and make sure that you don't end up in the same situation as me or in a situation where you've spent a lot of money and then things don't work properly. Now, this isn't about the CPU, because this is going to be an awesome CPU by all accounts, as far as I'm aware. I can't review it just yet, obviously, because I haven't been able to test it. Um, but I do have my hands on one, and I have gone through the process of installing it. And as I said, this motherboard is pretty swish. The problem I've got is that this is a motherboard which takes DDR4 RAM. And I only have DDR5 RAM. And I wasn't aware of this before I started the process of unboxing the motherboard even though it is actually on the box and in the manual, and it's not clearly marked. And DDR4 is ever so slightly different from DDR5. The notches on it are ever so slightly different. It's not immediately obvious when you look at the board. And so when I went to install the RAM and it wouldn't fit, I thought at first I was being a numpty because this happens quite a lot, and I just got the RAM facing the wrong way around, and I just had to turn it around. And you'll see some of that clip here, which I've left in as like a blooper reel of my stupidity and frustration as I go to install the RAM in what I think is the right direction and it won't fit. And then I think, okay, maybe it goes the other way. No, it's because it's entirely the wrong RAM. DDR4 will fit in here, DDR5 will not. Do not try and force DDR5 into a DDR4 slot or vice versa, because it will not fit and it will not work. And there is the problem, because you can get variations of motherboards in both the Z690 and 790 variants. So that means that potentially you could buy a motherboard that either only takes DDR4 or only takes DDR5. And I only have a DDR5 RAM in my possession. I've built various different machines over the last few years, and I've just used up all the DDR4 that I had. Whether I've built a PC for my kids or for friends or whatever else, I've ended up just getting rid of all of my DDR4 and I thought it wasn't going to be a problem because I've got several Z690 motherboards that I'm testing out and uh, now a Z790 and I thought that's fine I'll just use a DDR5 in that so the original plan was to swap out the formula motherboard that you can see in this Lee and Lee Dynamic Evo which I only recently built but I haven't done a video on yet or I will do because it's an awesome case as you can see and I wanted to talk about what the experience was like with that and then also swap out the motherboards and go for the newer generation of CPU unfortunately I can't do that right now. 
And <laughs> this problem actually also goes into several other first world problems that I have, because NZXT has been kind enough to send two Z690 motherboards, which I was going to be using for case builds with NZXT cases. So watch out for those in the near future. But guess what? Those ones only take DDR4 as well. So now I'm stuck in a position where I need some DDR4 RAM. So I'm going to have to spend some money to get some extra DDR4, which is a real first world problem but one that I don't want you to have. But at least hopefully you've seen some interesting insights into the things that are happening behind the scenes. And also a look at that motherboard from Azus and the setup there, and I'll leave a link in the description so you can find out more about that, because that's going to be pretty nice motherboard, I'm pretty sure, once I've got some DDR4 RAM to go with it. So watch out for this problem, but also bear in mind that you could potentially save money by getting a DDR4 board. DDR4 RAM is cheaper at the moment and a bit more accessible, and it also has faster timings than DDR5, so although you can get faster mega transfers, for example that Kingston Fury Beast RAM is 6000 megahertz, it is actually higher timing, so potentially a little bit slower in some ways than DDR4, and that obviously has been around for a bit longer. There's also been some issues with XMP on DDR5 boards that people have reported, stability problems and such. And obviously there's a wider range of DDR4 RAM out there, as you can see from these various shots from other builds that I've done. But still, a frustrating issue to have and hopefully one that you can avoid. So if you haven't subscribed already and you'd like to see more of this sort of content and more importantly, of the builds that I'm doing in the future, I've got an NZXT H7 Flow and the standard H7 as well as the Lian Lee Dynamic Evo to build and several motherboards and several Intel builds coming up. So subscribe and stick around for more of those. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.